Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to our Wednesday study in Amos. Very interesting one today, uh, Edom and Ammon. And uh, this area has always fascinated me because of a certain area known as Petra that's in this area. So uh, that, we're not taking a lot of verses today, but uh, they're packed full of stuff I just want to mention as to why God is so upset with uh, this particular area. But also how it has a, it has a future uh, fulfillment when it comes to uh, uh, the, the uh, tribulation period. So let's get started. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. And help us, Lord, to understand your word so that we can help others to see that when you tell us something, when you show us something in your word, that it comes true 100% of the time. And it's, uh, some of this stuff is so future. But we'd love seeing uh, the prophecies fulfilled. And that gives us more confidence that we know that uh, the prophecies that you've promised us will be fulfilled. And we look forward to that day so much, Lord. Thank you and praise you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, Edom and Ammon. A couple of interesting uh, groups of people. Those are the two we're going to take today. Uh, and the, uh, the rest of them uh, after Ammon, of course, is the Moabites. Uh, and, then, uh, and then after that, we'll be talking about, when we get into chapter 2, it's the Moabites and then Judah and Israel. Uh, so, uh, so Edom, where is Edom? Well, it's actually part of Jordan right now. Uh, here's a map of it. And uh, here's the bottom of the Dead Sea to give you a kind of idea, reference point. Israel's over here. And there's Edom. And uh, we're going to be mentioning a place called Basra, which is up a little bit further north up here. And then further south is Petra. And I, I, I mention these because it, uh, we're going to be, these are mentioned in here as, a, uh, as what God is going to do to this area uh, during, the, during this period that we're talking about. He's also going to do it again. Uh, and so that uh, the judgment uh, started all the way back in Genesis. And we'll kind of touch base on that a little bit. So let's get some verses in here. And we left off at chapter uh, in verse uh, chapter 1, verse 10 last week. And now we're in verse 11. I know we're really making a lot of progress, aren't we? Some, some books we go a whole chapter a day like we did in Samuel. And here we're going a few verses a day. <laughs> There's a lot in here to really talk about. So, thus saith the Lord, for three trans transgressions of Edom, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. So let's continue with our warnings of this part of Amos to the destruction of those around Israel. And as we saw last week, Israel was, was kind of happy about that. Okay, disappear. My, uh, all of a sudden my, uh, My virus protection had to make a, had to make an entrance over my notes. So let's continue on our warnings on this part of Amos. We saw last week Israel was joyous of that, the fact that they, that they were taking care of their enemies all around them. But God was not finished. He was going to get to Israel sooner or later. Unrepentant Israel and Judah are in that list, as we will see. And we'll see that till next week. So let's continue where we left off last week. Amos 1, 11 and 12. Let me read verse 12 too before we get started. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. <coughs> Those were all in Edom. Let me bring up a different map briefly to show those. It's an older map. Edom's down here. Uh, oh, no, I didn't want to show that one yet. Uh... This one. This one I want to show you. Not really. Which one do I have? 
show you. Here's Edom. Come on, get bigger. Okay, there you go. Had to think about it. Oh, no, that's too big. <laughs> Okay, Timon is down here, there near Petra that I was talking about. Let me blow it up just a little bit more. Can't really see Petra there too well. There's Petra right there that we're going to be talking about in a minute. And this Timon and his Basra, uh, and this whole area in blue is uh, Edom. So I'll send a fire upon Timon, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Uh, so it's a, it's kind of like the same thing we were talking about before. It's it's basically included the entire country in his wrath. Let's go back to an issue that happened back in Numbers uh, 20, verses 14 through 21. I'm going to read a lot of verses that are not in Amos this, uh, today because it, uh, I want you to get you a little bit of a background of why God is so upset with these people. And, May, and Moses sent messengers from Gadesh under the king of Edom, Thus saith thy brother Israel, thou knowest all the travail that thou befallen us. I might mention, before we get too much farther, I'm going to mention here in a minute. But both Edom and Israel are descendants from Isaac. Remember that uh, uh, Isaac had two sons, and one was Esau, and the other one was, uh, was uh, uh, Jacob. And of course, when we're talking about uh, Edom and uh, Israel, they are both descendants from different brothers that are both brothers uh, that were uh, twin brothers. And so I want you to get an idea of what we're talking about here. So that uh, the descendants here that are with Moses are descendants from one brother of, uh, of, of uh, Isaac. And then, the, of course, the other brother, Esau, is the one that inhabits this area. Okay, Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. And thus saith thy brother Israel, thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us. How our fathers went down into Egypt, and we had dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in uttermost of thy border. I should have got a map and showed you where Kadesh was. I can, I can show you where we, that one I believe I got in this other map. Uh, no, I guess it's not on that map. Might be on that one. Yeah, not far enough south. I need a, I need a bigger map of uh, of that area. Okay, let me see about, uh, this one, it might be on this one, I can't remember if I put it on here or not. Oh, that's too small, too small. I can see a tolerate, it's not on this one either. Kadesh Barnea is down uh, under here, uh, down in this area. So when they were coming out of Egypt, this is uh, in numbers here, and Moses was coming along this area here. He was coming to this area, and he wanted to go through Edom to get up to the Promised Land. And so he was asking permission to come through here. So let me get back to the passage here. And we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are at Kadesh, a city in the utmost, utmost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through the country we have not passed through, the fields, nor through the vineyards. Neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway, and we will not turn to the right hand or to the left. The king's highway is right here. It runs up along, uh, I think that, that that's actually labeled. It was a very famous highway all the way through, all the way up to even nowadays, I think. Am 
if it shows it here on this particular map. No, but it runs up, uh, it's this road right here, I believe, the King's Highway. It runs up along the side of the... Uh, We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed by thy border. So they're not going to bother anything. They're not going to take anything. They're not going to even drink any of their water. That's what that's what Moses is saying here. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. So this is what God's talking about uh, in uh, Amos. And the children of Israel said unto them, We will go by the highway, and if I and if I and my cattle drink of any water then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. So basically, they had to go around Edom to get around them. And they weren't, and they weren't allowed to go through them or, to, or get... Uh, or Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through the border, wherefore Israel turned away from him. Okay, so speaking of Edom, let's talk about Edom a little bit. Isaiah 34, 5. Lots of prophecies about Edom. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomaya and upon the people of my curse to judgment. I might mention that Edom was taken over by the Romans, uh, and they were forced out of here. And they moved to south of Judea, and that's why I got this other map. I wanted to show you where Edomaya was. So there's Edom here, and when they got uh, when the Romans took them over early, later on, they moved in this area of Edomea. So when you see Edomea, this is the area they're talking about. And a matter of fact, uh, when Moses tries to come up here through here again at some other point, uh, he will be. Uh, cause this is during the time frame of David and Solomon. So this is after Moses. I just wanted to mention that when you mention Edomea, it's just it's just another name for Edom. Of the Edomites. Okay. And also in Isaiah 63, 1 through 3. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? That's this is the glorious in his apparel, traveling in the great greatness of his strength. I I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I have tread them in mine anger and trampled them in my fury. And the blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. They are talking about Jesus when he returns at the second coming. And, I'm going to, and that's why I wanted to do a little split off here in a minute. Let me finish these verses about the how God has condemned uh, Edom. Jeremiah 49, 7-22. We'll get back to that passage. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Taman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom varnished? I'll bring that other map back. So I know where Taman is. If grape, if, grape, if grape gatherers come to thee, would thou not leave some gleaning grapes? I was. Wouldn't you leave a little bit, even if you, even if you don't like me? You're supposed to. You're supposed to. Be, if you're a Jew, you're supposed to uh, abide by these rules of, the, of God. If thieves by night, they will destroy till thou have enough. But I have made Esau a bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled. His burden, and his neighbors, and he is not. This is all prophecies. Leave thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive, and let their widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, those whose judgment was not to drink the, of the cup have assuredly drunken. And have thou he that shall altogether go unpunished, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Drink of God's wrath, in other words. For I have sworn by my safe, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather up together and come against her, and rise up to, to the battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, despise among men. 
Thy terribleness shall have deceived thee, and thy pride of thy heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. That's Petra. We'll get that in a minute. That holdest the height of the hill, that thou shouldest make the nest as high as the eagle. I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. And Edom shall be a desolation. Every one that goeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor, neighborhood cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the inhabitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is the chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me, and who will appoint me the time? And who is this that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes, that he hath, hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall, at the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as an eagle, and spread his wings over Basra. Whenever you see eagle, that's usually a reference to a, a, a divine uh, uh, presence of the of the God. And I believe that this is actually speaking of Jesus Christ at the, uh, at the uh, second coming. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. That was going to be uh, destroyed. One more, Ezekiel 25, 12 through 14. I want you to see how serious God is about this area. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and ranged herself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make a desolation from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fell by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. They shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Okay, so, and also he kept it kept in wrath. And one more, Micah 7, 18. Who is, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Now, if they would have repented, there's not saying that he would have uh, gone back at this. But because God knows all, he knows that they won't repent. You might ask, who are these people today? Everyone that wants to attack Israel, pretty much. The Arabs, nations, the Palestinians, all those different groups of people. You wonder why Israel is uh, a constant, under constant attack. These are the people that God is talking about. So both Edom and Israel have descended from Isaac. Edom was Isaac's sons Esau and Israel from Esau's twin brother, Jacob. And of course, we go to Genesis 25, 19 through 28, we get, a, we get an idea of what we're talking about here. These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethua, the Syrian of Padaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him. Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. So now this, this war has gone on since, the day, since they were in the womb. If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So Rebekah went to talk to the Lord about why the children struggled in her belly. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Esau never liked that idea that he was, uh, he was actually serving, or ultimately will serve, uh, the younger, which is uh, uh, Isaac, I mean uh, Jacob. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out all red like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his, his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. That's 60. 
And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. We're going to find out that that ends up being a... a So, so these two nations, like the two brothers, were always fighting. Edom had rejoiced at Israel's misfortunes. As a result, God promised to destroy Edom completely, from Teman in the south to Basra in the north. So let's take a look at a few of these. Uh, so let's look at Teman. Verse 12. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. So let's get a few verses here, Jeremiah 49, 7. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Teman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is wisdom banished? Jeremiah 49, 20. Therefore, hear this counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, and his purpose that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, Surely he shall make them habitations desolate with them. Isaiah 34, 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, is made fat with the fatness, and with the blood of the lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidney of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edomea. Isaiah 63, 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This is that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. So this particular prophecy here, speaking about a prophecy I think we're going to witness as followers of Jesus Christ, will be behind him as he comes from this area after destroying the enemies of Israel. The final battle of uh, at the second coming. And so I want to just talk about that for a minute because it's a fascinating thing to think about. Let me just finish a few more verses. Jeremiah 49, 13. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities that are shall be perpetual wastes. And jump into verse 22. Behold, they shall come up and fly as an eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And they that shall hear the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her birth pangs. And Micah 2.12. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. I believe that verse is talking about something we're going to read here in a second. Uh, there's a couple of passages in Matthew and Revelation that uh, I think point to this. And it's, a, it's what's going to happen in this area uh, during the tribulation period. So the first one I want to read is in Matthew 24. And Jesus is talking about this area. I believe. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. And let them which be in the Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay, so, that's Jesus pronouncing a judgment that at the midpoint of the tribulation, he's telling the people that realize that uh, that he's their Messiah, and he's going to tell them to not not take any even a moment to go get anything, but it beat feet immediately and head into the mountains. And that's what I want to talk to you about here in, a, uh, here in Revelation 19. So as we were reading there, this area known as Basra that we were just talking about in Matthew 24, where they had to flee to a known as Petra. And that's what I want to look at for next. 
It's, a na it's actually a natural sheath hold. So let me show you some pictures. Uh, we got, this is actually one of the rock cliffs in that area. Let me show you the map first. So this is uh, this is Edom that we've been talking about, and Petra is right here. And Petra is an interesting place because uh, Petra has a natural sheet fold, and you, and uh, and that's the and that's what makes this rather interesting. We've already seen some verses that talk about the sheep of Basra. For some reason, God will not allow the Antichrist to control this. Is where Jesus in Isaiah 63:1 we already read. Let's look at that real quick one more time. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? That this is the glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. So I, I believe that 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 prophecy we just had in uh, in Matthew, where God, where Jesus tells them to flee and not to grab anything. Don't even grab any clothes. Just run as fast as you can into the mountains. So I believe the area they're talking about is here uh, in Petra. Fascinating place. Uh, let me show you a map of the area. Uh, I like a better one than that. Is it this one? That's, that one's okay. Let me find a different one. Oh. These are all Petra. Uh, I'll, I'll explain them all in a second, but I want to get a map first to show you. Okay, here we go. So the visitors, this is the visitor center, but this this area here is known as a sink. It's actually a channel way that goes all the way into that wide open area of Petra. And that's why it's a natural sheet fold. Whenever you're talking about a sheet fold, it's an area that uh, has a narrow entrance. It's where it's where a uh, shepherd would uh, have one gate and you protect the sheep. And he would actually guard the sheep and stay in that sheepfold. They would be in the sheepfold, and he would be at that gate, making sure nothing came in to attack the sheep. This is a, this is a natural rock formation, and it's just like that. And this is what the area looks like uh, in the interior there, since I'm already here. And this is what it looked like when the Romans actually took it over. And this is when the Romans actually destroyed uh, this area, and they moved... Uh, this is what it looked like when the Romans were actually in control of this area. And there's another picture of it. So as we as we look through some of these other pictures, the entrance into the sink, the treasury, uh, and some other things. And this is that wide open area known as the Colonnade Street. That is where that that, that wide open area is, where they would be, where the people would be. Okay, so these are some of the rock formations that are actually in that wide open area. You can see there was quite a massive area. That's the sink, and that's where the the entrance is. So you can see how narrow it is. It'd be very easy to protect from an invading force. There's some people walking through it. That's the inside of one of the rock uh, rock formations that carved out. I think that's the treasury. Well, that's the treasury right there, looking out from the inside of the treasury. There's a coliseum dug out in there. And that's the treasury I was just talking about. So let's look at some of those other pictures I missed prior to this. That wide open area, so that's the wide open area we just saw. Uh, and uh, so you can see it can hold lots of people, as you can see people walking. So there's plenty of room in there for all the people that are going to escape Jerusalem. The Colosseum again. Most of these uh, uh, cave dwellings were actually tombs uh, for the uh, for the uh, for that people group, the Edomites. This is that wide open area again. More maps. That wide open area. All the different structures that were built there. So you can see there was quite a built up area. <clears throat> That was an old picture way back when, and a more modern picture, same place. 
is that colonnade street I was mentioning. This is the main town area of that of Petra. Okay, so that's enough of that. I'll leave it there. <clears throat> so let's continue on. So in Revelation 19, <clears throat> 11 through 13, <clears throat> is when Jesus comes back with us uh, to uh, take back. And it shows him that he's all red. So I think he's, he's actually come from here to flee the Jews and destroy the enemies of the uh, of the Antichrist that were near Basra. <clears throat> so I just kind of wanted to show that, uh, this is, uh, that this whole area has a very interesting uh, future. So let's look at Revelation 19. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. As he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. So this is Jesus coming back from this area, I believe, after destroying the enemies of the Antichrist. That we actually see that this actually that in this in Revelation 12 is actually no, we know that these people are actually here, uh, I believe, in this natural sheepfold, and that they're being protected here by Jesus uh, during the second half of the tribulation. So let's just read through this. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. When we see dragon in here, you're talk, that's talking about Satan. Persecuting the woman. The woman here is actually Israel, which brought forth the man child. So, so, so it was actually the Jewish nation that brought forth Jesus Christ, the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. And I remember I mentioned eagles. Uh, eagles are some kind of divine uh, help. And this is where God is going to help the people flee from Jerusalem at the midpoint of the tribulation. And I believe flee to this area. That she might be fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, a times, and a half a time. That's three and a half years from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of her mouth water as a flood. Whenever you see that term, it's usually it's always talking about armies. So Satan and his and the Antichrist are going to be trying to destroy the Jewish nation, which I believe is what his attempt is to do, to stop Jesus from returning. They might cause her to be carried away of the flood, in other words, destroyed. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood with the dragon cast out of his mouth. So probably some kind of a massive earthquake or something is going to open up the ground to where the people uh, it will protect the people from getting to Basra. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, and those would be the ones that did not go to Petra which kept the commands of God and had the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that's uh, I found interesting about this area. And I know it's kind of like a side trap for Amos. And this won't end until Jesus returns at the end of the tribulation. And by the way, Esau descendants are the Arabs we know today uh, that uh, are constantly wanting to destroy Israel. So uh, back to our original Amos. Verse 13 through 15. We read through here, then we'll talk about it. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because thou have ripped up the woman from the child of Gilead, that they may enlarge their, their border. So this group of people, from uh, is, it, one of the reasons God is so mad at them is that they keep trying to take more land away from Israel. Uh, and they keep and they keep going after their brother. So I realize that these are two, these two nations are brothers. And God ain't happy about that. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Reuben, and I shall devour the palaces thereof with shouting in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. And the king shall go into captivity, he and his princes together, saith the Lord. So let's break this down a little bit. So the Ammonites had descended from the insistious relationship between Lot uh, and his younger daughter. So now we're going into the Ammonites. Verses 13 through 15 is actually the Ammonites. 
So this is the next group. So, so we're done with uh, we're done with the uh, and let me bring this down. Actually, I got a better map for that. We just use this map here. Yeah. So the Ammonites are further north. And you mentioned that. And so that uh, they're the next group that's going to be destroyed, uh, and Amos is uh, predicting. So we'll, end the, so we'll look at this one today, and then we will uh, stop there. And uh, so the Ammonites had descended from an incestuous relationship between Lot and his younger daughter. We actually see this in Genesis 19. This is when they escaped from Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, that the two daughters uh, ended up getting their father drunk, Lot, and having a having a, a sexual relationship with their father. That produced two groups: the Ammonites and the Moabites. Uh, the Ammonites and the uh, yeah, and the Moabites. And those are the two groups we're going to talk about next. Today we'll take the Ammonites, and then uh, next week we'll we'll look at the Moabites and move into chapter two. So let's look at this passage here. What happened back in? Uh, Genesis. It came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. When he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt, that's Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zor. And he dwelt in the cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. They thought that his, their father was the last one on earth. I don't know why they would believe that. But Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may pres preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. He was pretty drunk. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in, and lie with him, that he may preserve seed for our father. So both daughters did it. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she rose. And they were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son, and called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son, and called him name ben the same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So that's the group we're talking about now. So the Ammonites were hostile to Israel. And although Israel began to worship their idols, the Ammonites still attacked them. Uh, we actually saw that recently in Judges 10, 6 through 8. <coughs> and we were talking about it in 1 Samuel 11. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Asaroth and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord, and served not him. And the angel of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines, into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel, eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side of Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. So again, uh, one of those times that God used the Ammonites to actually punish Israel for their uh, disobedience. So after Saul had been anointed as Israel's king, his first victory in the battle was against the Ammonites. Remember that from Samuel 11. We just talked about that Monday. Rabbah was Ammon's capital city, which is right here. And Amos' prophecy of Amos' destruction was fulfilled actually when the Assyrian invasion comes and destroys the northern kingdom. So, we'll, so that's when the actual destruction happens. Okay, on to verse 13. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of the child of Ammon and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. So this is a very specific thing they've done here. They've actually raped the women and and, uh, and destroyed the women with children, killed them. Did it in a very nasty way, it seems like. This is mentioned in a few verses. 
I'll look at Jeremiah 49, 1 through 6. Concerning the Ammonites, that thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doth their king inherit Gad, and his people dwell in the cities? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabbah of the Ammonites, and it shall be a des desolate heap, and her daughter shall be burned with fire, and then shall Israel be heir unto them that were their, his heirs, saith the Lord. So because they tried to attack Israel, it's going to go the other way around. Verse 3. How, O Hisbon, for Ai is spoiled, cry ye daughters of Rabbah, gird you with sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro by the hedges. For the king shall go into captivity, and his priests and his princes together. Wherefore, gloriest thou in the valleys, thou flowing valley, O backsiding daughter, thou trustest in her treasures, saying, Who shall come unto me? Behold, I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord God of hosts, from all those that be about thee, and ye shall be driven out of every man right forth, and none shall gather up him that wandereth. And afterwards I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. And another passage in Ezekiel 25, 2 through 7. God's taken this, the, the, these people very seriously about what they've done to Israel. Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites, and prophesy against them. And say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God, thus saith the Lord God, because thou sayest, Ah, against my sanctuary, when it was profaned, and against the land of Israel, when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah, when they went into captivity. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the man of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. And I will make Rabbah a stable of, for camels, and the Ammonites a, a crouching place for flocks. And he shall know that I am the Lord. For this, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast clapped thine hands and stamped with thy feet and rejoiced in the heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel. Behold, therefore, I will stretch out my hand upon thee and will deliver thee from the for a spoil to the heathen. I will cut thee off from the people. And I will cause thee to perish out of the coarse countries. I will destroy thee that thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So you can see that God has taken this very, very seriously. And speaking of Rabbah, verse 14. Oh, a couple more verses. Uh, and why are they going to do this? Well, what happened now uh, is that uh, this is there's two verses that show us what they actually did to Israel. And this is why God is uh, causing this good to happen. First is 2 Kings 15, 16. Then Mayhem smote Tipshah and all that were therein, and the coast thereof from Tizra, because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it, and all the women therein that were with child he ripped up. Pretty nasty play, uh, words here. Thus saith, and then, what happened to Hosea? Oh, I just wanted to show you verse 13 again. For three transgressions of Ammon and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because thou art ripped up women with child of Gilead. So you can see it again in verse 13 there. And also mentions in Hosea, Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. A pretty nasty uh, set of people doing this. I can't imagine. Uh, I can't imagine. So verse 14. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall be devoured the palaces thereof, with shouting in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Some verses on this in Jeremiah 49, 2. Now Ammon on the highlands of Gilead. Which is this, uh, Ammon is this, this general area. On the mountains of Gilead. Uh, Gilead, yeah, Gilead's up here. The city of water is 25 miles north of the Dead Sea uh, is what we're talking about here. So uh, that the area they're talking about is 25 miles north of the Dead Sea. I know Rob is right here, so that, that might be they might be talking about here also. Gilead is an area, so that, it could include this whole area as you see here: Jabesh, Gilead, Ramoth, Gilead. 
So this area is actually called Gilead, uh, kind of like a providence. Okay. Jeremiah 49.2. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabbah of the Ammonites. And shall be a desolate heap, and her daughter shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith the Lord. And last verse for today, verse 15. And the king shall go into captivity, he and his princes together, saith the Lord. So their king will go into captivity. And we see that mentioned in Jeremiah 49.3. How, O Hishbon, for Ai is spoiled. Cry ye, daughters of Rabbah. I gird ye with sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro by the hedges. By thy king shall go into captivity, and his priests and his princes together. Okay, so... That's what we'll look at today, and we will continue with this next week. We get into uh, the next part, chapter two. We're going to start talking about Moab, uh, Israel, and Judah. Uh, so they think Israel and Judah think they got they got out of the scot free, but they're not. So they're still rejoicing that their enemies are going to be destroyed, but not. Uh, but they don't think about that themselves yet. I wouldn't want to be Amos when he tells them about the fact that uh, God has got God's got it in for you guys too. So, dear Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, so much for this study and for the uh, prophecies that we see here going all the way back to Amos, uh, that they're still coming true and that we're going to see these things come to fulfillment uh, in our future even and when it comes to the destruction of these uh, enemies of Israel. And I pray for Israel always, Lord, that, uh, that you will protect them and uh, safely help them uh, to uh, come and realize that Jesus Christ is their Messiah and that more and more people will actually turn to uh, the Lord that we know all won't, and we know that this time is coming, that you're going to have to bring your wrath against uh, this land and against the enemies of Israel. We pray, Lord, that uh, many will turn to you and become uh, saved and born again rather than f uh, see destruction. But we know that, uh, that your word is true and that uh, these days will be coming. So we pray for all those that... Uh, well, uh, go through these trying times and you help them and give them comfort as they uh, foresee the tribulation and the persecution they're going to endure as they go through this. We give you praise and thanks in all you do. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So it's uh, interesting to be watching uh, things happening over there now as it does. Uh, some remnants of some of this is actually coming into play as we talk. Every time I think about uh, October uh, 7th, back here last year, uh, when that attack happened, some of these uh, some of these verses come into mind when it comes to the the sheer. Uh, I can't think of a good word to use, but uh, you know, the the rape and uh, and the uh, and the and the the violent type uh, uh, rape that was happening uh, to those young ladies that were in uh, uh, in Israel uh, by the uh, by the by the, uh, I can't think of the name of the group now. Uh, uh, down in Gaza, uh, I can't think of the name of the group. But I'm sure somebody will mention it. Uh, God Hezbollah. Uh, oh gosh, that's gonna bug me now. Hamas, Hamas, and what they did. Uh, kind of reminds you of some of these things you see talked about here and that uh, these were all descendants from some of these folks that we're talking about here going all the way back in the biblical times so see you again tomorrow and we'll be back into uh, tomorrow's study in uh, what is tomorrow's study in I can't remember right now top of my head oh Philippians Philippians uh, I think we finished Philippians. No, I think we got one more, one more uh, lesson in Philippians before we get uh, back into Acts. But we'll be get back into Acts, by, I think, Friday. So we'll see you again tomorrow, and you have a great day.